Welcome inside the calm before the storm. It is an honor and pleasure to welcome this brother. I've been trying to track this brother down for like five years now, five <laughs> at least five years. And, and, you know, he's finally opened up a, an opportunity for me to uh, sit down with him. And I'm very gracious of that. Uh, ladies, ladies, calm yourself down. Uh, but we have a gentleman who you fell in love with, strongly fall, fell in love with, uh, probably back in 2013, is, is my math off? That's exactly right. All right, so, yeah, he's here. Uh, you know him as Tommy, but his real name is Joseph Sikor. Brother, thank you for finally sitting down. Lenny, it's so good to be here, man. I finally <laughs> made it. I'm a good age whiskey, five years. Yes, five years, brother. And you know what? He's wearing the right shoe gear. You know, right. his shoe game is up, up. Superstar. Who would have known? This is good psychic, man. That's because you're born in June. Mm -hmm, that's true. And I'm not. So that's, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's a good thing. So let's talk about Friday. Friday, you've moved beyond to another level uh, for, for all of us to appreciate this uh, hot new flick that's pretty interesting from what we can see from the trailers called The Intruder. It's an incredibly interesting film. Um, it's a great film. It's a great classic thriller starring Michael Good, uh, Michael, Michael Ely and Megan Good um, as Scott and Annie who... They buy a house mm. um, in the in wine country in uh, upstate California, oh, and Dennis Quaid's character Charlie Peck um, doesn't want to give up so easily to the house. Now they they've fallen in love. They've had that dream. We all have that dream. The the house. The let's get up some land. Right. But they also have this sounding board. This friend Mike. So I play Mike, <laughs> who is um, Michael Ely's best friend. Okay. And the sounding board says. This looks like a great house, but this man is not what he appears to be. This man's a little off. This man is a little crazy. No, 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 no. So, I'm not trying to hear that. So your character, Mike, that you play in the flick. That's right. You didn't know this guy? Uh, no, I didn't who know. Who selling the house? I didn't know the guy who was selling the house at all. In fact, I was totally against the house. I was telling him, look, stay From in the, the jump. city. Stay in the city. Stay where we're comfortable. But he's in love, we're man. Making, he wants to please his wife. He, exactly. And I think that that transcends. We can. We all know <laughs> how, what the pressure of pleasing our partner is. No, but pleasing a partner, like a girlfriend uh, or boyfriend, is one level. Now, you just, wife. you just recently got to another level, too. So the wife level is a whole different ballgame, mm -hmm. no? Mm-hmm. The wife level is a different ball game. I mean, that is a partnership. It is forever. I take my <laughs> vows seriously. I know that's right. So, did you write your vows? Uh, no, okay, no, okay, no. Okay. Straight up, okay. straight up, old school Catholic <laughs> okay, style. Okay, okay. I let I let the uh, let the uh, church write the vows. Now I got you. I understood. Understood. So in this movie, The Intruder, you try to convince this this brother, Michael Ely's character, mm -hmm. I believe Scott, right? Yes, correct. To nah, stay in the city. You don't need to be that far away from civilization. <laughs> From real life. And finally, he when goes. he comes to the house, uh, Mike also unknowingly disrespects uh, Dennis Quaid's character, Charlie, by not only smoking cigarettes and putting them in the lawn, not only taking a leak in his bushes, but also suggesting, and most detrimentally, that the house... Oh, this could work, but it needs to be changed. We need to take down walls, open it up, mo modernize this, this house. Was, a this bit. is Mike Ely's character. This is what he's saying. No, this is what my character is saying. Oh, my wow. character, Mike, oh, is gosh. saying, "Hey, we, we're gonna we're gonna change this whole house." You, you're messing up this dude who now, owns the house. If you think of the house as Dion Taylor, our great director, did as a metaphor for society, yeah. this house really represents society. Wow. This old school institutionalization of society that's not going to change, except when we now have these two people these two african americans inside this institution that are that do want to change you have two options when a sounding board comes in you know what the truth is yeah. so mike does start speaking the truth now the truth either has two options you either listen to it and follow it uh -huh. or like uh charlie the dennis quaid character does <laughs> eliminate it Woo -hoo -hoo. friday this friday this may 3rd friday the intruder opens up joseph sakura is in it megan good Michael Ely, Dennis Quaid, it's going to be, it, it's interesting just by, just by the, tra the trailer alone, man. It's oh, it's a fantastic trailer. And oh, Michael and Megan are crazy. fantastic in it. And Dennis Quaid is phenomenal in it. He's subtle. Yeah. He's crazy. He's scary. And the chemistry between those three is fantastic. And I'm kind of like this fourth electron yeah. rotating around this picture. <laughs> Look, we're coming back and talk with Joseph a little bit more. Stay close to us, baby. This is the calm before the storm. Welcome inside the calm before the storm. Almost that time for us to light some candles and then get into that romantic mood, ladies. So I want you to stay right there because the choir storm is coming up in just a moment. But I got I got the man that you have fell in love with from power uh, for quite some time. 
Joseph Sakura is here with us. Tommy is with us. You know, I wonder, you know, in looking at this new movie that you're in, Joseph, mm -hmm. that opens up on Friday called The Intruder, I wonder if Tommy was your character, Mike, in this film, because I haven't seen this movie yet. I haven't seen any other, more than what you have seen, ladies and gentlemen. But I wonder how Tommy would have dealt with this situation, unlike Mike is dealing with the situation. Yeah, there's some uh, not so subtle discrepancies between the two characters, <laughs> whereas so. Tommy would have followed the Dennis Quaid, the Charlie Peck character, um, tied him up, tortured him to tell the truth, recorded it, wow. sent that over to Scott. <laughs> And then after Scott said, yeah, take care of him, he would have enjoyed eliminating that problem. Oh, man. Yo, Tommy's a, a beast. Very different film. A beast. We should talk a little bit about your past, man. You know, I just want to know at what age did acting really start? Because I know you majored in it in, in, in college. You majored in theater. I did. But at what age, young, way before college? I started acting when I was um, 11 years old. Um, I'm from... Um, a lower middle class background in the city of Chicago on the far northwest side of the city. So the it, I always equate it for New Yorkers like it's like Bayside, Queens. <laughs> OK, OK. It's nice. You know, <laughs> okay. it was a, a high school. If you wanted to find trouble, you could. But you could also, you know, make your way uh, to that next level or get a city job like most of the people did in the neighborhood. Yeah. So acting was very foreign hmm. for me and everybody that I knew. I had nobody in the business. So my mother. Uh, legitimately and classically opened the yellow pages. We looked under acting, didn't no see way. anything. Wow. And then she looked under theater. I auditioned for a big uh, play in Chicago, and I didn't get it. And that started my career of no's for the rest of my life. That's Most deep. of my life has been no. You can't do this. You won't make it. You're no good. I got kicked out of my first acting college. I, the first college I went to was a, um, a, what do you call that? It's like a... It's like all the, it's a, God, have prep, a prep school. It's not prep. It's, okay. it's, it was college. And, uh -huh. and I, I was asked to leave the program. So I was told that, no, you never, you're never going to make this. This did is not Did you cause a you. ruckus in the classroom or something like that? I did, actually. I did. I, 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 I'm, oh, boy. This is, this <laughs> this is, is the this early, is, early time this, stages, this is, right? This is true. A conservatory school is what it was. Conservatory. I, I actually did. T a teacher just kept, a teacher pushed me to my limit. Got it. And I said, you know, laugh at me again. And I'm gonna knock you out in your office. <laughs> no, and I no, told him, I said, I told him, that. I said, I dare you laugh. And he didn't laugh. Wow. But I did get kicked out of school. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a mistake. I wouldn't do that now at my age now. But there's there's certain times people push you to that limit. Yeah, but that yeah. anger that I did have as an angry young man, um, I've through therapy. I went, I've been going to therapy, and I did go to therapy for years before I got the uh, character of Tommy anger management mm, therapy because mm. that behavior is going to only lead you to two places. You know, mm -hmm, it's going to mm -hmm. lead you to jail or, or it's going to lead you to an early grave. Yeah. Um, but, and there's tons of explosive anger. So many males have this issue. Um, uh, white dudes, people of color, everybody. So I, I say that if you do have this issue, talk to people. And because I was mm -hmm. able to conquer this issue of anger, hey, look, I still get angry. And sometimes I think those thoughts of like, ooh, that guy's throat looks nice and open. Ooh. But I'm just going to take a step back for right. a second. Right. You learn how to conquer that anger. And because I did, I was able to utilize it for the character of Tommy. No question. So that my anger as a, a Chicago, and I was a graffiti writer in Chicago. And so in that way, I was... A, a minority in a subculture, certainly not a minority. I would never claim that at all. But so within that subculture, I was. And so my my anger came out of fear. I was scared because I was getting my ass handed to me time mm -hmm. and again. And finally, you know, you you have enough. Whereas yeah. Tommy's anger is not fear. Tommy's anger is rage at people who are not following the rules of this game. You signed up for this game. Yep. I'm gonna be the referee. I'll make you live by those rules. Wow. So very different, but um, but complicated, right? You know what? It complicated, but it's interesting how life played its journey out so far for you, and it's stuff far from over. But you know, all that what you went through in the beginning is really filtering and, and gives you an outlet right now when you do. Act Act in power yes. to ex excel and react and do so so authentically mm -hmm. and now we understand from Clearly. a real place you know from a it real does, place, it does yeah. come from a real yeah. place yeah joseph sakura is with us baby that's right tommy from of course power and of course mike from this new movie that's opening up on friday called the intruder, the intruder. <laughs> so we got two things we're gonna wrap it up with him in just a moment let me go into one of your favorite slow jams what would that be r&b give me a good one. Oh gosh you know it's funny some of my favorite r&b artists are, cannot be named at this time you know Oh, the some no. Chicagoans. Oh, come on. Let's no, go. Let's go with the classic Chicagoan slow jam. Let's go with Cupid from Sam Cooke, fellow Chicagoan. Wow, I, I didn't think that you would pick Cupid, Sam Cooke. 
Yeah, young dude. What you know about that? <laughs> Evidently a lot. <laughs> Evidently. We'll be right back. This is the car before the storm. Minutes away from the quiet storm, ladies. I'm Lenny Green. Nice to be close to you. Joseph Sakura is with us. This Friday, you get a chance to see this brother up close and personal in a different lane than on power as Mike in this new flick called The Intruder. Now, that leads me to ask, what, what other characters down the road, and you've done quite a few in, in order to build your, your mm -hmm. resume um, already. What characters do you find yourself, now that you've completed this project, also venturing to kind of do? Is there any other hope or are you I just kind of know, I love comedy. I love, I love comedy. I love um, situational comedy. Really? Um, I love obscure comedy. I love, um, I was in a series called The Heart She Holler with Patton Oswalt, Amy Sedaris, Heather Lawless. Hmm for uh, a while that was horror comedy, bizarre. So I love comedy and I'm usually the straight guy because I'm good at, as you see in Tommy, yep. it's timing. Yep. It's not that I'm a hilarious guy, but I know I can read a script and that first year of power, they didn't write, I mean, they, of course they, they started writing jokes for my character, but like at first, that was just a straight script. So I found the comedy hmm. in that. And I so I really react well to that. I would love to do more comedy. You know, I always would love to play one like a spy, like a James Bond type. Mm. I really would love to do that. Like you know, three of those movies in a row. That'd be hot. Like, yeah, kind of like a born identity, but a little yeah. bit more, but a little more refined. Like right. I want to be that guy in the suit. I want to be the guy that nobody uh, suspects. Kind of that dashing guy. Well, well, you can, from a look standpoint, you look like. Don't mess with him, but we don't know anything about him. Right, right, right. Yeah, the kind of the faceless man a little bit. <laughs> I also love period piece stuff, like really? 1890s. I actually wrote um, a pilot about eight, the political machine in the 1890s, the modern American political system that we have right now, this machine mm. political system, was really cultivated and perfected in the 1890s in the Chicago aldermanic system. So I really love that. And also Chicago uh -huh. has um, a, a culture hub of that time, kind of, it's post-Civil War, but it's also just into uh, the Jim Crow era yeah. of, of, of American society and how that was affecting an urbanized, a modern American city. Kind of the first American, modern American city was the city of Chicago at that time period. You said you're born on a, you grew up in the north side. Northwest side, yep. Have you been on the south side? Of course. Do you hang out on the south side too? I hung out on the south side my whole life in the Auburn Gr uh, Grisham neighborhood at wow. 89th and Wallace. Uh, actually, just across the street was uh, one of our dearest, closest families were the Powells. And anybody from that neighborhood will know Mama Powell. And um, uh, Granny, as you also she is known, uh, Nora Powell, who's still with us, thank God, uh, was also one block up and over from the Mac family, That's crazy. from Bernie Mac's That's family. That's crazy. So when my brother ran into Bernie Mac, the best thing that I ever heard, I was howling <laughs> laughing when, he, when my brother was working at a hotel in Los Angeles. Followed Bernie Mac into the bathroom. It was just like, "Oh, Bernie Mac, you're the best. I'm from Chicago." And he's like, "Oh my God, look at him! All. He's crazy." And then he finally was just like, "Oh, you know, I grew up with the Powells." And he said, "You know, Nora Powell made this sweater I'm wearing." And wow. He goes, Nora Powell, what you know about Nora Powell? That changed the conversation. That changed right the there. conversation right there. So yeah, I have been on the South Side. I was also an amateur boxer for many years, seven years uh, in Chicago, Park District boxing. Well, that's why you got that athletic fights. look. Okay, that, and, um, don't mess with me. Look. And so I fought all around the city. Plus. I would, like I said, I was a graffiti writer, so I knew every area of every of, of the entire city, anywhere where public transportation went. I knew where every gang was. I knew who people wow. were. I know when I had to keep my hoodie up and my hands covered just to make it to the bus, to the train, get home. So that means you're a good pool shark. I'm I'm not. You know what? Look at this. My, there's my one of my pool partners right there in the room. I'm not a shark, but I'm I'm good. If you're not good, I'll beat you. Or you're you don't not, just bother me because you're man, not good. Man, I'll challenge you one day today. I'm in, Lenny. Let's right. do this. Let's do this. We're going to do this. Justice Sakura, this Friday, which is a couple of days away, The Intruder, you'll see him, Megan Good, Michael Ely, Dennis Quaid. The Intruder is going to be quite interesting for you. Quite interesting for us. It's a great film. I, I believe you, man. Look, continue success with everything. Thank you, brother. And don't let this be the last time we sit down no, and, uh, and chop it up. And make sure you bring the right stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>